Hello Power Rangers Lightning Collection fans and welcome to the next chapter of the Lightning Library, the series covering the history and details of every entry in the Lightning Collection, so you know which are the best, what you're getting with each entry, and what I think of them. As far back as the first leak for the Lightning Collection, on November 16th, 2018, the contents for Wave 2 had been known. On that night, as covered in the Wave 1 episode of the Lightning Library, the Twitter user at PowerGetalk had uncovered 8 Lightning Collection figure listings that were all thought to be for the first wave on Amazon. These included Mighty Morphin White, Mighty Morphin Pink, Mighty Morphin Lord Zed, Lost Galaxy Magnet Defender, SPD Shadow Ranger, Dino Charge Red Ranger, Beast Morphers Red Ranger, and Beast Morphers Gold Ranger. It wasn't until a 4chan leak and confirmation from the distributor site Southern Hobby that the info of waves being 4 figures each was confirmed. Using process of elimination, the Wave 2 lineup was seen to confirm to have Mighty Morphin Pink, Lost Galaxy Magnum Defender, Beast Morphers Red, and Beast Morphers Gold. New York Toy Fair would be the place that the entirety of Wave 1 was revealed to the public and put up for pre-order, but Hasbro decided to do more than just that. At the panel held by Hasbro on Saturday, February 16th, this would give a sneak preview to Beast Morphers Red from Wave 2. Although he was not put up for pre-order with the rest of the reveals that day, the panel had also stated it was planning to do two waves per year, which was something that didn't end up panning out. In early March, the Facebook page Culture Shock Collectibles would report from Melbourne Toy Fair in Australia that Hasbro had shown off the Wave 2 prototypes at that event, but photos were not allowed. This post confirmed the assumed lineup of the wave ahead of the official reveal, and also brought up that no civilian head was seen with the Magnum Defender figure. Now that Wave 1 was showing up on the shelves, Wave 2 had continued to be in the back of collectors' minds heading into the summer of 2019. On May 20th, 2019, the promo shots of the Beast Morphers Red Ranger figure were found and posted, but still no pre-orders yet. Now heading into San Diego Comic Con in July, it was assumed this would be the place Hasbro was to reveal Wave 2 officially. Preview Night had shown at the Hasbro booth three mystery boxes on the wall alongside Wave 1 and the SDCC exclusive set on display. These boxes were what they were to reveal at the Power Rangers panel on Thursday, July 18th. During this said panel, Wave 2 was finally shown off, and in the middle of the panel before they had gotten to Wave 2, the site GameSpot.com posted an article on the reveals just a little too early, which gave early looks at the promo shots for Wave 2. These photos and this panel would be the first public look at the female body sculpt for the Lightning Collection. After the panel, Wave 2 would go for pre-order for a September 1st release date. Pre-orders on Hasbro Pulse would ship with a poster as well, showcasing the box art from Tom Whalen for the Wave and character bios for each figure on the back. While the Wave was listed for a September 1st release on Pulse, September 15th on Amazon, and dates a little further away on most sites, this did not end up being the case for when they would actually be released. Nearly two weeks later on July 30th, Wave 2 would be spotted by numerous fans at Walgreens stores around the US. By this point, Hasbro changed the release dates of the figures to August 12th on Hasbro Pulse, but lucky fans who found them at Walgreens would have them much sooner. The Wave had a case breakdown of three Beast Morphers Red figures, two Beast Morphers Gold and Magnum Defender, and only one of Mighty Morphin Pink, beginning the trend of female figures more often than not being the one per case figure and the rarer one of the Wave. By the time September had finally rolled around, pre-orders had started shipping from all the online retailers, but there were delays on some of them on Amazon, and MMPR Pink in particular was delayed on Hasbro Pulse a couple of times. Let's take a look at the figures themselves. Beast Morphers Red is first up as the first Lightning Collection figure to come out while their season was still airing. This benefit also allows for his civilian head sculpt to be a little more accurate, since the current actors are able to have a 3D head scan taken while older characters rely on stock footage and photos for their references. Devon's sculpt is for the most part a typical Lightning Collection mold, with all of the standard points of articulation seen in this graphic here. His chest features the strap designs seen on the Beast Morphers suit, which are a separate and free piece as compared to molded on on the basic figures. It can become a bit loose at points, which might be slightly annoying, but it is mostly manageable. Devon comes with special hands for holding his Beast X Saber, which is very similar to the one his basic figure released around the same time. This is the same case with the Cheetah Beast Blaster as well, 
However, the Lightning Collection version actually features less paint than its basic counterpart. He comes with a special effect piece for the Beast X Saber to create a digital sword slash effect, which looks really cool. Devon is joined in this wave by his teammate Nate as Beast Morphus Gold. Nate here is seen using a similar mold to most Lightning figures and also includes the same articulation points. Being a Gold Ranger, he also has a very nice metallic gold paint finish on his entire suit. He comes with two weapons as well, his Striker Morpher and Spin Blade are present, and he includes hands for holding them of course. He also has a hand for the pose he's often seen making in the Sentai footage, which is a really neat and unique touch to this figure. The blue effect pieces are back in this release, with Nate coming with a more wild spark explosion type piece to fit onto his sword. The Nate head looks good as well, however it could have looked even better if it had glasses on, since Nate is almost always seen wearing them in the series. Moving away from representatives of the current season at the time, this wave's release has Lost Galaxy, Magnum Defender. Magnum Defender, according to Hasbro, is supposed to represent the character from before Mike Corbett took control of the powers. This is also used to explain why he doesn't come with a head from Mike. However, this is contradicted by the pre-order poster bonus, when his bio is given for Mike on the back. The figure features a unique armor sculpting to it, which has as much of the standard articulation as it can, but it is limited by the solid rubbery cape on his back. The holster around his belt is molded in, but is also a bit loose at the same time to try to accommodate the articulation, but it always does so well. Speaking of this holster, the Magna Defender comes with his Magna Saber in both its sword and gun modes, and when gun mode, he can have a blue shooting effect piece to peg into the barrel. Finally, the wave is capped off with our first female figure in the Lightning Collection, the Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger. The female Lightning Collection mold is slightly shorter than her male counterpart and has thinner legs and arms. Compared to the somewhat exaggerated parts of the female build that Bandai used, the female Lightning mold is much more realistic and show accurate. Kimberly has hands specifically to hold her power bow, but this is one of the earliest examples of Hasbro possibly using Google image search results for references since the bow hand is for the wrong side compared to how she holds it in the show. This does match though with a mirrored image seen on Google Images, which could possibly be where the reference comes from. The hands are also smaller than the male ones, and a smaller joint. The power bow itself is the same one that came in the SDCC Jason 2-pack, but this time it has an arrow piece for her to hold as well. Instead of having an effect piece to put onto the arrow, an entire effect arrow was given instead for a finisher attack look. Her final weapon is the blaster mode of the blade blaster, which has a weird error of silver paint on the part that's supposed to be white. To finish the figure off, here's a look at the Kimberly head that also comes with the figure. Wave 2 is a very interesting one. This wave continues patterns seem to be established in wave 1 of a red ranger and a representative from MMPR that would continue from multiple waves afterwards. It introduced Lost Galaxy into the lightning collection, the female figure mold, and gave the current season some spotlight. In the months following this release, the wave has seemed to be the most abundant, the one that's clearance the most, minus MMPR Pink, and the one sort of forgotten the most, which is a shame, since it was an overall very solid second outing by this new toy line. It could be that Wave 2 was overshadowed a lot in the fall of 2019 by multiple store exclusives and 2-packs, and next time on the Lightning Library, we will take a look at the first retail 2-pack in the line, with one of the strangest picks for its contents.